Hi, welcome back to a series storytelling for nonprofits. I'm Arturo, a designer and educator at Canva. Have you ever wondered how popular video content is? Well, every minute that goes by, over 500 hours of video are uploaded to YouTube. And 57% of people who watch a nonprofit's video go on to make a donation. Video is an incredibly powerful tool. And in this episode, we're gonna show you how to harness that power to tell your stories. Consider how many social platforms there are today. And interestingly, most of them are moving towards primarily supporting video content to connect with their audience. We have Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, Snapchat, and more. And there's no sign of video content losing momentum anytime soon. And that's momentum you can leverage for your organization to capture the attention of your audience, bring your course to life for them, and make a powerful ask to donate, fundraise, or sign up as a monthly recurring giver. Did you know you can create videos in Canva? Our video suite comes with plenty of tools for recording and editing, adding music and transitions, and collaborating with team members to create videos for any platform. That, combined with our content library, gives you all you need to bring your stories to life. We asked our in-house video expert, Eddie, to show us how to tell captivating stories using video. She'll share some tips to ensure you shoot great footage and then demonstrate how to easily create an impactful video with the tools in Canva's video suite. If you'd like to practice your skills, we have a template for you to use and a workbook which recaps the skills Eddie shares so you can explore Canva's video suite and create a short video yourself. Access these resources via the QR code or via the links in the video description. Now, let's check in with Eddie. Hi. Video is a powerful medium to communicate your story. As a nonprofit, it makes sense to harness the power of video to get your message out to as large an audience as possible. So let's explore how to create videos using Canva. Firstly, I'm going to take you through the essential elements of video storytelling to help you plan what content you capture so that you can use your time as efficiently as possible. Then I'll show you how you can use Canva's video suite and content library to build on the footage you capture to create a 90 second video quickly and easily. Okay, so firstly, what are the essential elements of video storytelling that are important to consider before you head out with your crew to capture content? Storyboarding. Plan your shots. It's important to storyboard out what you're filming in advance as much as possible. This will save a lot of time on the day. Get to know your script and figure out what B-roll will complement different parts of the script. Shoot engaging B-roll. B-roll, also known as color or overlay, is basically any footage that's going to be laid over your story bed or clips of your speaker, AKA your A-roll. Don't let B-roll be an afterthought. Take the time to plan out what B-roll you're going to capture. One way to make your B-roll engaging is to use movement. Some simple camera moves you can try are pans, AKA rotating side to side, or tilts, AKA tilting up and down. These two movements are particularly great for establishing shots and vast landscapes. Make sure your shots are relevant and complementary to the overarching message. If the shots aren't relevant, they may actually be distracting and detrimental to your content. Zoom versus slide. Compare this slide movement to the zoom on the previous page. Take a look at how elements within the space interact with each other here versus how flat and 2D a zoom looks. As viewers, we feel more like we're there in the room. Quick note, always film for a few seconds longer than you think you need. Trust me, it'll help you out later. Sound, capture good quality audio. The quality of your audio can make or break your content. Try to find a quiet area, pause for planes and buses, and consider purchasing an affordable, phone compatible lapel mic. Lighting, shaping your light can be the difference between content looking average or looking cinematic. Use whatever ambient light you have and consider investing in a simple ring light or reflector. A reflector or flecky can be used to bounce light from an existing source onto your subject. These are particularly useful outdoors for bouncing light from the sun. And if you have no other light source, use the sun. Leverage your aspect ratio. Different social media platforms use different aspect ratios. Keep this in mind while you're filming and either shoot with enough room to crop your shot or simply rotate your phone or camera and film the shot again. Framing and composition. Try to make it so that when your audience looks at your shot, they know exactly where their eye is meant to go. Try reducing clutter, 
using directional lighting, using your depth of frame, and using shallow focus. The space around your talent's head is known as headroom. Make sure they're not swamped or looking tiny in the frame, but also be careful not to chop the head off. Quick note, you may want to intentionally leave room for graphics, but plan this out in advance. That's all the tips for today. Let's move on to part two, creating your video. I'll talk you through the 10 steps to master the skills you'll need to make your story. You can practice along with me, but don't worry if you don't get everything done. The workbook is yours to keep. Step one, add video to a template. Change the background video of the template's first scene. Search for a suitable video from the video library and just drop it in. Adjust the length of the intro clip if needed. You can change the title and subheading at this point too, and apply your brand kit fonts if you have them set up. Step two, use rulers to straighten the horizon. Click on the second scene, pull in a ruler like this to fix the tilted horizon. Step three, resize the video to fill the screen and set it to be the background. Lock the video so you don't accidentally click it and move it. Step four, consult your storyboard. Your storyboard will remind you what B-roll you originally planned. Scene two, long shot, childhood beach where Nick says, growing up in Australia, the ocean was a huge part of my childhood, almost a second home to me. I love it so much. So use spacebar to play and stop the clip and S to split the clip when Nick pauses. For example, after Nick says, for four years. Hi, my name is Nick and I've been a volunteer with Ocean Orb for four years. Split the clip again at another pause, for example, when Nick says, I love it so much. Growing up in Australia, the ocean was a huge part of my childhood, almost a second home to me. I love it so much. Now you have created a short scene, which will add B-roll over. Step five, add some B-roll. Add a frame to hold the B-roll footage. Search for a grid like this square one that we can resize. It drops in the same size as our video frame, but you can resize it or move it if you want. You can see the original footage is still there. We're adding this in as it will sit on top of our initial footage so we can keep the same audio narration. Now this is really important. Before you add your B-roll, check how long your original clip is. We'll need to match that duration to our B-roll after we've added it. Otherwise, the scene will extend to the duration of the B-roll clip. Now search for some B-roll in the video library and choose some that you think is suitable. Drop it in. Click on it and click the scissors to change the duration of the B-roll to match the original clip. If your B-roll clip has its own audio, just mute that if you don't need it. And voila, now you have B-roll whilst keeping the original narration. Hi, my name is Nick and I've been a volunteer with Ocean Orb for four years. Growing up in Australia, the ocean was a huge part of my childhood, almost a second home to me. I love it so much. Keep doing this until you're happy with the flow of your video and keep referring to your storyboard for suggestions on what to add and where to add further B-roll. Quick tip, don't use shots longer than 20 seconds or so and break up long clips by adding B-roll, switching angles, zooming in or otherwise visually breaking up the scene. This will just make the whole story a little bit more visually interesting for audiences. Step six. Add and edit background music. Search through our library of audio tracks and add them into your video. Background music can help set the tone of your video and help tie clips together. Take the time to find music that really matches the mood of your video and switch up the music if the mood changes throughout. Mm -hmm. 
I already did a search and I like one called Breathe Ones Last. You can trim or select a section of the track if it's too quiet at the start for instance. In audio effects, you can fade in or fade out a track. You can adjust the volume up here so it doesn't compete with Nick's voice. You can also have multiple audio tracks. For example, if you had your own recorded narration, you could upload it here and add it. Hi, my name is Nick and I've been a volunteer with Ocean Org for four years. Growing up in Australia, the ocean was a huge part of my childhood. You can also search for sound effects. So for example, try adding a wave crashing at the start and end. Now you have a go finding some background music and adding it to your project. Step seven, add captions. Did you know that 85% of videos viewed on Facebook are watched without sound? So it's really important to add captions to videos, especially if you're uploading a video to Facebook. It also makes it more accessible. So we're going to transcribe what Nick is saying. Hi, my name is Nick and I've been a volunteer with Oceanorg for four years. Add some text and type in the words. Shrink this down and fit it in the title safe area. Change the color so it's more visible or try text effects like lift, which gives it a slight drop shadow. You can increase the intensity. Experiment with fonts so it doesn't overpower the visuals. E.g. Roboto Condensed is a good one. Another way you can make it stand out is by adding a rectangle and then drop the transparency. This makes the captions really easy to read. Step eight, include a call to action or a CTA. At the end of your video, provide some action that your audience can take, whether it's clicking a donate button or following a link to your nonprofit's website. You could resize a social post to add as your CTA. We've added one here for you to practice on. I'll change the color to match. Step nine, we're going to add animations to any static images. I'll select all of these elements, press animate, and have a look through the different options that we have. Some of these are free, some are pro. I love breathe, which is free. And for the Ocean Org logo, I'm going to do something a little different from the rest so it stands out. I'm going to give that one a rise. That's looking great. Step 10, share. When you think you're finished, watch it all back to check that you're completely happy with it. Then you can share it with the world. There are many ways to share your video, including downloading it and sharing it straight to your socials. Happy creating. Thanks so much for watching. That's the end of our series, Storytelling for Nonprofits. Use this series as a guide to create your nonprofit story. And remember to subscribe so you never miss a video from us and check out www.canva.com slash events for upcoming webinars.